Hi, how's everyone doing? Well, first and foremost, I have to thank her for pronouncing my name correctly. That's a really, really big deal to me. And uh, I can't tell you that that's the second most thing I'm appreciative for today. The first most is the fact that you're here to listen to me speak. Now, I'm going to promise you one thing. I'm not going to give you an overt vendor pitch. Let's call it covert or subliminal, if you will. But either way, what I want to talk to you to about, about today is something I'm pretty excited about. It's about unlocking the power of VPC traffic mirroring, basically opening up an entire new set of use cases and things that ultimately impact and really benefit customers. So let's get into this. First and foremost, I'm going to say something that might be a little bit controversial in today's world. When you talk network analytics, there is no reason, none whatsoever, that we should limit network anal analytics purely towards performance or security. At ExtraHop, we believe that the network is the ultimate source of truth in the enterprise. Why is that? Well, let's think about it. Let's say you have an application, and the application's running slow. Now, we see this all the time. Show of hands here. Who, who over here works in operations? OK. And what about security? Now, this is one thing that's quite interesting. Because one thing that we're seeing across the customer landscape is that we're seeing NOC and SOC teams merge. And the reason we're seeing it is fundamentally they are dealing with the same data source. If an application is not secure, then it's not well architected. If an application is, is not performant, it's probably not well architected either. What's the single source of truth that tells you what's happening in the application? It's the network. It's the wire data. Why? Because wire data or the network packets, they're as close as you can possibly get to ground truth. They're not subject to interpretation. They're not subject to developer error. So fundamentally, when we talk about taking network data, we're talking about using that to power both IT analytics as well as security so that you can make better data-driven decisions. What does this really mean? Well, let's take a look at security operations. One thing that we see today is that as people move, move their workloads into the cloud, we see two-thirds two -thirds of IT professionals say that their biggest concern is security in the cloud. 10% of CISOs <coughs> sorry, <coughs> excuse me, say that they've heard of the shared responsibility model, but they haven't been able to implement it. What is shared responsibility? Well, shared responsibility is essentially security is a, it's a team sport. They, you can't have a separate security team and hope that your application is secure. It's like trying to throw in a firewall and saying, hey, you know what, I put a firewall in, now I must be secure. Sorry, it doesn't work that way. Security is a discipline, and it needs to be treated as a discipline. And the shared responsibility model is essentially, it's formalizing that understanding in the way people work. And here's the scary part. Throughout 2022, 95% of security issues are not going to be something within our control as IT admins. It's going to be somebody who left their S3 buckets open. It's going to be somebody who shared their password. It's going to be somebody who did something very frankly stupid. But that doesn't change the fact that we are still on the hook to ensure the safety of our customer information. Even if, even if they're choosing a password that, that's their pet's name, doesn't change, the, doesn't change the fact that we're still responsible for securing our customers. Let's take the step further. So of these security threats, what are we looking at in terms of where those threats lie? 62% of them are due to misconfigurations. Now, I know that sounds like a wide, wide place to be, and it is. Take a look at the Capital One breach. I know everyone likes to talk about it, and I'm, it's not cold, cold comfort that I'm talking about Capital One. But when we talk about Capital One, fundamentally, what do they do? Number one, open S3 buckets. Number two, misconfigured app, a web application firewall. That allowed people to come in and take a look at their entire customer database. Everything associated with their customer data was basically a misconfiguration. Secondly, and this overlaps for sure, unauthorized access. And this is almost by definition. That's the, it's the culmination, if you will, of a security breach. Somebody got access to something they weren't supposed to. OK, we can look at that and say, gee, that's unfortunate. Can we build controls in? 
But the problem is, if somebody's going through and trawling your environment, looking at customer data, would you know about it? And I know this sounds almost elementary, but in the vast majority of cases, people don't know when they've been breached. And half the, ca half the cases, when there's a breach, it's because the API itself was insecure. Now, this is a generally large term, right? Which we can talk about lack of encryption, we can talk about lack of appropriate API keys, we can talk about various things. But the bottom line is, there was a privilege escalation due to a poor, a pure, poor usage of an API. Now, here's the catch. If you're using traditional tools that's not using network data, if you're using log files, how can you figure out that there's an insecure API access? And it's a trick question, because you can't. Because you can't. The way the agents and the instrumentation work inside those environments is by hooking the code stack. So if you're, if you're relying on self-reporting to determine whether your application is secure, whether insecure API access is occurring, you can't do it from inside the application. You must do it from the outside looking in. So what does that really mean? There's a problem statement over here. The problem statement is it's very difficult to determine what, uh, how secure you are looking from the inside out. You need to look from the outside in. So how do you look, look at the outside in? How do you actually understand what is actually happening in the environment? And it's a leading question because traffic mis mirroring is the missing piece of it all. It ties it all together. Now, I, I uh, waxed poetic, if you will, or as, as poetic as I get, on uh, the, the benefits of network information. It's observed. It's the only data source in the data center that is observed. Think about it. If you pull a log file from, a, from an application, that means a developer chose to log that piece of information. If you pull an SNMP stat from a piece of infrastructure, you're querying the control plane. I have seen so many cases where a Cisco switch, or any switch for that matter, I don't mean to bash on Cisco, I've seen so many cases where that control plane does not know what the data plane is doing. See, so if you're querying that control plane and saying, hey, how well are you doing? And it's saying, hey, I'm fine. That could be part of the problem, and we've seen it time and again. Problem is, these components do not understand what's going on. However, the network, the network is truth. It's the polygraph. It tells you exactly what is happening in the environment. You can't switch off the network if you're hacked because it shows you exactly what's going on. So ultimately, what does this all mean? Well, we believe in what we call a SOC triad. It's, it's a term that's being used tremendously in the in industry. And essentially, when we talk about the SOC triad, we talk about logs. That's your scene. You know, that's your Splunk, your arc site, what have you. A place to gather and correlate information. And we see endpoint information, you know, the crowd strikes, the carbon blacks of the world, and those are all very valuable. But there's a fundamental problem with just using logs and endpoints. And that is that if your device cannot run an agent, it's automatically a place of vulnerability. And this is not academic. We've seen malware in our environment, in our customers' environments, of MRI devices, of, as in magnetic resonance imaging, MRI scanners, running malware. And guess what? They're running some embedded version of Windows that came out in 1999, and FDA approval doesn't allow them to apply the patches. So they're still running it, and they're still vulnerable to the eternal blue toolkit, and they can't run the agents. But there's still a surface area for attack. And we're not, talking, we're not talking about some sort of iPad browser here. We're talking about something that literally controls the amount of radiation you put into a patient. IoT devices, cameras, polycom phones, Enterprise, enterprise IoT, it's a huge, huge open surface area that is not covered by logs or endpoint agents. But I'm not trying to point too, too bleak a, a picture over here. This is where that third vertex of that triad shows up. That's the network. And when we talk about the network, sorry, it's my build. What we're really talking about are certain properties of the network that make it extremely valuable. Firstly, the network is ground truth. It's not subject to interpretation. If a packet moves between one host and another, those hosts talk to each other. It's not a question of missing that communication or somebody forgetting to log something or querying something that was sampled. If the packet moved, it happened. It's ground truth. Secondly, it's difficult to evade. If that traffic's there, if you have a tap, watching every single transaction as it moves across the environment, 
then obfuscating that traffic is very, very difficult to perform. But, but thirdly, and most importantly for security, what's the first thing a hacker does after they enter into your environment? If they're going after your, your critical assets, the first thing they do is they turn off auditing. They shut off the agent. They turn off logging. That's the first thing somebody will do. You can't turn off the network. It's on. That tap is up, up, it's running. If you want to turn off the network, well, your application's not gonna run anymore either. So these three properties make it very interesting. So let's get into exactly what this VPC traffic mirroring thing is. Now, with uh, attribution to my friend Jim Carroll over here who runs the AWS networking category for, for Marketplace, we shamelessly stole his slide. So this slide is basically the slide that uh, Jim uses to occupy his cat. What we have over here is we have an EC2 instance, and it's, run, it's got an ENI, an Elastic Network Interface, and it's running traffic. Now, the application's running. And so when the application runs, what are we essentially talking about? We're talking about traffic moving in and out of that application. At this point, we say, OK, these transactions are all occurring. Now, there's no agent running on this device, nothing at all. So at this point, we want to say, OK, I need to set up a traffic mirroring session. So what do I do? Well, I'll go over to my AWS console, and I'll set up my monitoring instance. Now, this could be any number of monitoring devices. It could be a SaaS. It could be an endpoint. It could be an XROP device. And essentially, what you do is you move ahead, and you click on Create a Traffic Mirroring Session, at which point the two ENIs are connected together, and traffic starts moving between the device under monitoring and the, uh, and, and the device that's pick, catching the traffic in the first place. Now, the interesting thing over here is that we have three very valuable uh, attributes, if you will. Firstly, it's compl really simplified. You're not sitting around plugging in cables or pulling cables around like you would in a physical data center. Secondly, because this is real-time traffic mirroring, as opposed to just taking packets and storing it on disk, you're taking that real-time traffic and you're streaming it over to an XROP system or any number, of, any number of monitoring systems. And thirdly, you can identify and troubleshoot both forensically as well as proactively any vulnerabilities you might find. Now, this is essentially what VPC traffic mirroring is. There's a session tomorrow. It's a session 206. It's going to be in the, I believe it's going to be in the Venetian. I would encourage you to check out that session as well. It's going to talk about exactly how these, these, this technology is used. And as you can see, this is the sort of slide that will keep a cat enthralled all day, every day. Now, what does this mean? Well, OK, I'm going to tell you a little bit about how this matters to us. Now, you'll notice that I promised you no overt vendor pitches, but I'm leading to us, not with us. So cut me a little bit of slack, and, uh, and, 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 and maybe we can get through this quickly. It won't be that painful, I promise. So Reveal X Cloud. This is essentially a SaaS. And what the idea behind this is that you should be able to set up your workload, set up VPC traffic mirroring, and just send the, traffics over, send the traffic over into our VPC, where we will provide complete analytics behind it. So essentially, what you would do is you have that your environment with the VPC traffic mirroring, and it will send that traffic over for our analytics. What do the analytics tell you? Well, it's passed through a machine learning backend where we learn trends, we learn unusual conversations, we learn where things are not quite looking normal, and then we surface them and we bring them to your attention so that you can make better decisions, so that you can remediate things, and we can actually remediate vulnerabilities for you in real time. And I'll get to that in a second here. But what if you don't want to use a SaaS? Well, that's fine. What you can actually do is you can launch your own AMIs inside, that, inside your VPCs and mirror traffic within the VPC and understand exactly what's going on. Again, that same streaming, real-time analysis of traffic, running at tremendous scale, showing you exactly what's happening in real time, not after the fact, but in real time, without the need for agents or instrumentation or log files. Finally, what you can also do is, OK, we've detected a vulnerability. What does this mean? Well, we can automatically trigger remediation. So for example, let's say we detect that a user is behaving abnormally. Let's say a user just grabbed a hold of your customer database and is exfiltrating it off-site. We can use that. The ML algorithms that we have on the back end identifies that flow of traffic, 
and we can apply an ACL, we can apply a security group, we can shut down those attacks in real time. Essentially, what this is about, and that's, there's many ways to look at it, but what this really allows you is it allows you to get better visibility to your, into your environment. Just like you cannot manage what you can't see, you cannot expect to secure what you can't see. And fundamentally, XDROP is built on the notion that the network is the, is the single source of truth, or the ultimate source of truth for the enterprise, and we exploit the network to the best of our ability, available, our, our ability trying to pull as much intelligence from it in real time as possible, so that you can go from detection to validation to investigation to root cause very quickly. Ultimately, we're all working at cloud speed today. Once upon a time, we'd work in IT operations, we'd have silos in the organization, and SVP would stand for silo VP. Nowadays, everybody is expected to work together. Security is everyone's job. And the very fact that we have coordination costs across the organization means that we need a single platform to serve every constituent. The network is the thing that ties the business together. Every, from the moment your transaction comes in the front door to the time that you get that response going back to them, every single aspect of that transaction runs over the network. In order to make sure it's performant and secure, you need something that understands the network. I'll end with this. Um, so we are we're a company, we're a close AWS partner. We've been around for about, uh, coming up on 13 years now. And you know what? It takes time to build something of value. We're a company, we're not fly-by-night startup. We're a company that has companies, uh, that has uh, customers across the globe. Uh, we're not 400 employees anymore, we're a little over 500 at this point, we're growing very rapidly. The point though is the, the one guiding star, the one notion behind XTROP beyond the technology is it is customers first. Always the customer first. And that is actually the reason that we've been able to partner with AWS so meaningfully. That customer centricity, the innovation that we bring to bear, it's to make sure that our customers' lives are better. Almost every single one of our people at ExtraHop has worked in IT operations, has worked in security operations. We're not just talking the talk, we like to think we walk the walk. If you'd like to see a demo, please stop by booth 3233, which is somewhere up there. And um, thank you very much for coming. I can pause for Q&A if you have any, otherwise, thank you.